and CEUs and credits. Again, um, you can turn these on and off. We'll talk about preferences in a minute. But again, uh, you would create in there uh, the, the, the maximum permissible or the, the maximum that you're going to grant for that class. And the, the default behavior is that whenever someone registers, they earn those credits by default. It's kind of salvation by grace, if you would. And your role as a registrar is if a student strays, cancels, drops out, you would then deduct those hours or wipe those hours out <clears throat> when they cancel or you, you do your final uh, removal of the class. Uh, subject code. Big, big deal. Uh, if, uh, of all the fields to enter in the system, I really encourage you that you be adding a subject code to every class. And the, the reason for that is several fold. One is a, it's a good way to help you do some class uh, reporting by a category or a group. And the other thing is that it will automatically stamp on a name record in the name interest codes. And real quickly, I'm going to jump to a name record here. In the interest code area, whatever you have on the class for a subject code, when a student enrolls in that class, that subject code would be stamped into their interest code so that you know, just looking at the student, this person is interested by having expressed interest or having taken a class in an ACEWARE class. Optional additional info tab. Uh, one of the things about the course screen is that you've got several different tabs on the course screen. Main, additional, fees, instructors, comments, ACEWEB. Well, we're now into the second tab, which is additional information. Um, alternate course code, um, I don't know. There's not a many, but if you need to cross-reference your classes with perhaps a campus class, some of you who do credit programs, Northern Colorado, if you need to cross-reference your class with a PIN number or a CRN number from a campus credit class, this would be where you'd put it. Um, special registration times. If you've got a conference or a symposia and you want to reference early, late registration times. <clears throat> email attachments. Uh, obviously, with the email module, you can send an email confirmation and include attachments. Now, note, best practice nowadays would be that rather than send an attachment with an email receipt, you embed in the email receipt body a link to the documents on your website. And the reason for that is that that helps you uh, hopefully improve deliverability of emails so that you're not fighting with uh, your spam traps on a person's email uh, with attachments. A uh, person to notify for blind carbon copy of an emailed uh, registration. <clears throat> for each class, you can add in three or four names of people who you might who might want to get a copy of every registration coming in. If it might be your coordinator for the class, it could be a program sponsor if you have a third party sponsor on this class. Again, that's an option class by class. Sponsoring firm. Uh, this is particularly uh, relevant for contract classes, <clears throat> and this links to the firm's table. And then finally, membership prerequisites uh, for you OSHER lifelong learning programs. Um, a lot of those programs require that you must be a member in order to even enroll in the class, not irrespective of fee breakdowns. So again, this is where the OLLI prerequisite uh, comes in. User-defined fields. <clears throat> now again, uh, all of the main course, all of the main screens in ACEWARE, student manager, names, course, register, and instructor, have user-defined fields where you as a program get to define what fields you want to, what data you want to store in the different fields. Uh, that is adjustable through the preferences. And speaking of preferences, uh, one of the big things for all of the screens in Student Manager is that you, as a program, get to choose what fields you're going to use on the screen. And then there is also a series of behaviors 
there's a couple ones here. The idea whether you use a split location field or a single location field. Typically, programs that do conferences might do a single location. If you're doing more class programs where you're actually scheduling classes in buildings and rooms on a campus, you're going to use split location. <clears throat> so again, uh, preferences and setup capabilities are handled through uh, the course preferences screen. The right-hand side of this screen is where a lot of, again, preferences occur. So that's where, uh, again, if you're especially new users, even if you're a system that's had ACEWARE student manager for a long time, if you are new to the system or you haven't gone back and rechecked your preferences, I would encourage you to do that because a lot of times there's a new preference that we've added through the upgrade process, and you may not you have, you may have missed <clears throat> that there is now an option for you to uh, set up some different option uh, set up some different behavior related to your course screen. Reminders about user-defined fields. Again, um, activation of the user-defined fields are user-specific. So user by user can enable fields. Um, the actual labels themselves are colored blue. Anything blue on your preferences screen is global. So everybody, those are global for everybody in the system. Black items are the ones that are uh, uh, user specific by each individual user. You can validate character <coughs> and number fields in uh, the UDF by using a plus sign in the description. <coughs> and we'll cover that in the codes webinar. All right, um, next one. You can display the contents of a UDF on the main tab in the course screen. Uh, and that is right here on the, uh, there, there's a little 30 character window that you have the ability to either show, you know, what, uh, now you can do what you want with it, uh, but you can either use it to show something from the user defined field, something from fees, actually any element from any of the other fields back in the record can be displayed for you so you can see it right at the front screen. 